Hey, Bobby here with CoderFan. I was on Reddit the other night and I was looking at a question a user asked about building MVC-like areas inside of a Blazor app. And he wanted to know if that was even possible to do. Uh, he is new to Blazor, so I thought I would take the time to delve into the auth system built into .NET, C Sharp, and the Blazor framework to show you how we can achieve that, but even more, how powerful it is now this is a deep and wide topic and we're just going to cover the front end part of this the back end of setting up an auth system and building an authorization pipeline that's something that we have to push into our course because it takes a little while to talk about but if you're interested in building complete enterprise apps um, head to learn.cutterfriday.com. We have a course, Complete Blazor from Beginning to Pro. And whether you're an aspiring full site developer or you're just transitioning into the next job or you want to pick up Blazor, this course is for you. But let's dive into the code here and let me show you what we're talking about. So I wrote this app here, and this will be in a GitHub repo that you can go download and look at the full code there. It's free for you. And um, basically, it is implemented ASP.NET identity and allows the user to log into this site. And based on that, we're going to secure a couple of pages. Let me show you kind of how this works. So I have this dashboard here, and you can see I'm not logged in here. And normally, a dashboard would be something that you would want to restrict usage of unless you're logged in. So we want to put that behind the paywall. We're going to charge for this dashboard. The same thing for the admin area as well. However, your app may have a role and say only admin people can see this. So we'll talk about that scenario here. And then this contact page, well, that should be public. We want them to contact us. Maybe they want to buy our app. And then also have this user info page here that I wrote. And we're going to use that to diagnose the logged in user so we can look at the user's claims and what types of roles they're in so we can better understand what's really going on. So let me log in. Let me show you that page first. I'm going to log in here. And I'm going to log into demo admin here and password one, two, three app. Now this will come fully pre-configured when you get the app and you download and clone the code um, with these password logins. And you can see here inside of the user info page before it says we're not authorized. And now it knows about the logged in user specifically. It's in these couple of roles here. Now, role is something you can do, and the claims are about the user, and that's the difference between the two. Um, so this claim is they have this email name, and they have this email address. They have this image. Those are claims. And then there's roles in this app, user and admin, and we use these strings to run our app to tell people what they're allowed to do, maybe allowed to see, allowed to function, those kind of stuff. All right, so that tells us about the user, and you can see already this cascades down into all of our pages. All of our pages now have access to this context of user, and we can secure our pages. Now, what's of note is that whether this app is running client side or server side, we can get this context of the user down into those pages so we can secure it. Now, when you're running WebAssembly, even though we can secure the front end, Front end security can be bypassed, so we need to make sure that these same type of techniques are passed into our APIs. And so we're not going to cover that, but if you have a secure back end, we can use these mechanisms to secure our front end. All right. So let's first off, let's look at how our site is constructed, how our folders are constructed, and maybe let's lock down these two pages right off the bat. So I'm going to stop this and let's look at our code here. Inside of our code, I have a folder structure here. And inside of Blazor, they're very agnostic to how you set it up. Inside of CutterFound, if you come to the course here, we always create a folder called components. And inside that, we're going to put a layout. And then inside of that, we're going to put our pages. Now, you'll notice right here, there's this account folder here. And when you scaffold identity, um, the scaffolding will go ahead and put this in its own folder. And that's kind of cool. All right. So they're already following the same type of folder structure we do. But to mimic areas here, what I did was in the pages here, I created another folder called app area and another folder called public. I can name these folders whatever I want. It doesn't really matter, um, but I just called it app area. Now, what we're going to think about in app area is this is the app area that you need to be logged into to see these pages. OK, so think of these as an old school NBC area and the public is 
these pages should be public. You don't have to be logged in. You can just um, look at them. All right. And so you can see I've got a couple of pages, dashboard, rocket admin, and also got this contact page that's also in the app area. All right. So inside here in this imports page here, or component, um, if you add underscore imports to it, you can do something like this and add an attribute authorize. And what this will do is make sure that all of the children inside this folder now require the user to be logged in in order to see them. Okay. So this will lock this down at the folder level and its children. So even additional folders inside of app area will also be applied this authorized attribute. So that's one quick way to mimic what NPC areas can do. And so let's run this and see what happens. Now, before when we ran this before, we could click on any of those pages. Let me show you the difference. Now I shouldn't be able to click on them. So if I click on dashboard, look, it prompts me to log in. It moves me over to a login page. The same way is true for the admin page. And also this contact page, you got caught up in this folder, the app area, but what if I wanted to keep it in that folder for whatever reason, but I don't want them to have to log in to see it. I want to make it public. Now I can move these pages wherever I want because of the way routing works. But if you want to organize it into a folder, what do you do? All right, let's stop this and show you what we can do. Now inside this contact page here, you can see here, I have this route here. So this tells the user how to get to it. So I could move this over to the public folder and everything's going to work the same, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep it organized in my app area here for whatever reason. And I can add an attribute to this like I did in like I did inside of the imports. And this says allow anonymous. So when we have an attribute on a page component, that will override any other parent component that would be inside of import razor. And so we can override this tag right here by placing it on our page here. And this is allow anonymous. And when we run that, now our contact page, you don't have to be logged in in order to, to view it. So you can see here, if I click on it, boom, I can see the contact page now, but these are still locked down. All right. So if I log in here one more time, I can now see the dashboard and the advent. All right. And I also can see the user info here. And I can see here that this user, has a role of app user and a role of admin. And if I log out and log back in, I'm going to log in with a different user here. And this is called just demo user. And if I go to here, you can see this person only has the app user role. It doesn't have the admin role. And so this is what's really good for this page in development is to see who's logged in and kind of what claims do they have, especially if you have complex claim systems that you're trying to do with. This page will save you a lot of heartache. So that's one thing. If you go get the, co the code from GitHub, um, you can just look at how I wrote this user info page and you can expand it however you want. All right. But what we could do here, let's make sure that only the person that's in the admin role can view this. You need to be logged in and have a role of admin in order to view this page. Let's see if we can make that happen. And that's pretty simple here. So I'm going to come over to the rocket admin page here and I'm going to add an attribute on top of this. So I'll say attribute and I'm going to authorize. The difference is I'm going to add a roles equals admin. Just like that. Okay. And so now this will override what's in the import in the area thing here. So the area says you must be authorized. Uh, this tag says you must be authorized and exist in this role. So now we won't be able to get to that unless we're logged in as an admin. You 
See here, this tells me I must log in. So I'm going to log in as an admin here. And boom, I can see the admin page. I also can see the dashboard page. And I can see the user info here. I have two roles, app user and admin. And that allows me to see it. However, if I logged out and log in as the user, I shouldn't be able to see that. And you can see here, boom, access denied. I don't have the right role to get here, but I can see the dashboard page. Okay. Now, uh, this is kind of a bad user experience. One of the things that we don't want to do is show links to people if they're not authorized to see them. This is called either an attack vector, but it's also just bad UI design. Why show me a link that I'm not allowed to click on? Okay, so what could we do to better improve the user experience up here in our UI experience in our menu system? Well, there's another component that we can use here to, to achieve that. So I'm gonna look at the, the menu system. This is the menu here. And you can see here, I've got the home link, and then I've got this link here that is the dashboard link. And I've also have this link here that is the admin link. And so there's another component that I can use here. And so if I'm inside of a page or a component and I want to restrict HTML not to be rendered in there, I can use a component called authorized view. Just like that. And I place that around the HTML that I don't want to show up. So what this is telling us is if you're authorized, meaning you're logged in, show this. If you're not, don't show this. And so I'm going to put this around the dashboard link and around the admin link. And we'll run that. And now you'll see that those links will disappear until we're logged in. And that kind of completes what we can do. And it's showing you that we have attributes and a authorized view component that allows us to make our UIs a little more dynamic based on login. So you can see here now the links don't show up. And so if I log in, we'll just log in as admin. So we're logged in as admin and boom, I now have two links here. Well, that shows you the power that we have built into .NET. And I would love to be your teacher, your coach, or your mentor. Just head over to learn.cutterfoundry.com. I'll teach you all about Blazor and whether you're aspiring or you're getting that next job, however you want to do it, the course is built for you. Anyway, I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.